Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, let's talk about the two different AI models that are in PhotoRAW 2025. This is Local Gen AI and Stability AI. You'll see these pop up in the Generative Erase tool and the Generative Crop tool. So let's cover you know, why the two models, what are the benefits and drawbacks of each, why might you use one versus the other, what else do you need to know about for these models so that you can make an informed choice on which one you want to use and maybe when you want to use one over the other. And uh, real quick, if you like videos like this, kind of a no-nonsense approach to, uh, to, to, to photography and technologies like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're adding on one or any of its tools to your toolkit, check the show notes. I've got an offer code down there. Save you money. It won't cost you anything extra. It gives me a little support so I can do another video like this. So uh, local gen AI and stability AI. You know, first off, you know, where do these things show up in Photo Raw 2025? And, and why do we have the two models? Now, let me just show you where these things show up. If you're in edit and you're doing something with, with retouching and uh, this case I'm doing you know, generative erase, underneath the gears you have two different models that you can use for the AI work, local gen AI or stability AI. And those two same pop-ups show up in the crop tool as well. So these two choices, you know, it begs the question, why are there two? Why, why two AI models? And it comes down really to processing power. You know, uh, local gen AI is going to use the graphics processor in your desktop or laptop computer, the thing local to your machine. And even with a dedicated graphics processor, you know, those are um, relatively small scale when you compare it to something like cloud computing. Stability AI will tap into cloud computing. It will do AI at cloud scale. Uh, and now there are, of course, pros and cons to, to both of these. But one other reason, before I get to pros and cons, one other reason that there is local gen AI and stability AI is if you have an older computer you know, uh, and it doesn't have a graphics processor that is, that is up to the task of doing AI computations at the level that we want them for our photography, well, that local gen AI option, it'll be grayed out. It just won't even be available to you. But you could still use and leverage the AI technology by turning to something like stability AI. Uh, and so that's why we have these two choices in the UI there. So you have some flexibility on when to use things. So with the two models, the fundamental question becomes which one's better? You know, and if I measure things purely by the results, of the retouches, stability AI is, is better than local gen AI. It, it just produces better results. And the fundamental reason is stability AI is using cloud computing through stability, you know, a, a, another cloud service to do the AI processing. But you need to think a little more about the overall pros and cons because uh, there are several things to consider. I'm just going to put these up on the screen as I talk through them because I want, I want to make sure you get this picture here, right? So with local gen AI, the benefits, it runs locally on your computer. You don't need an internet connection required. Your images are staying on your machine. They're not going to the cloud and it's part and parcel of on one photo raw 2025. You, know, you bought Photo Raw 2025, you've got local gen AI. The drawbacks is you might see less than uh, great results. I, I shouldn't, shouldn't even say that way. Maybe inferior results compared to stability AI in some cases. Most of the time, it's, it's good. There's always a little bit of lower res anytime you're doing AI. But also, it requires a modern dedicated GPU, right? I mentioned that a minute ago where if your computer doesn't have a strong dedicated graphics unit, uh, you may not even have local gen AI available to you. Now, what about stability AI? It's like, okay, Scott, you know, you're, you're saying stability AI produces better results. You know, well, what's the good? What's the bad? Well, the benefits, as I just said, the results in most cases are better. And that's even on systems that have a strong GPU. I'm going to show you some examples from my computer and stability AI is still you know, producing good results. Uh, and you can still use it on uh, older hardware, right? You're, you're not limited to the hardware on your computer. You're farming out AI uh, computation to the cloud. Now the drawbacks, it's not a free service. Stability AI 
will, in, in, in the very short term, cost you money to use. And I'll talk about costs in a minute. It requires an internet connection and you are uploading your images to the cloud. And that might mean you're having Stability AI use your images to do more training and uh, more uh, improvement of its own service. I will talk about terms and conditions because those are important to read anytime you're considering a cloud service. I want you to be aware of all these things so you can make an informed decision. Uh, but let's return to results from these two different AI models. I have an example photo. I'm going to just show you the uh, the differences between them and that way you get at least a tangible feel for okay how big of a difference is this and how important is that to your particular retouching needs. All right, we're going to zoom up into this corner here and I've done uh, two different renditions of removing these metal posts. One using local gen AI and another using stability AI. Here's the local gen AI removal, right? Pretty good. It did a it did a pretty nice job in filling in all these different wooden slats and the other uh, the windowsill. It rebuilt the corner on this uh, this portion of this plank covering this you know this opening in this building. There's some softness here in the the, the brush and these twigs and you know, these collection of tumbleweeds. And there's some softness down in here where it gets a little bit. Um, you know, a little bit muddy. We see this quite often with AI generated results because the generated results are usually lower res. Uh, if you're posting images on social media and that's all you care about, you, know, you, you basically don't care. This is, this is perfect for that. If you're trying to do a big print, different story, right? So that's one of the things to consider when you're thinking about your AI models. All AI models, and I think all are generated, there's going to be a level that is uh, less than uh, what your camera would have captured. But now let's take a look at this compared to Stability AI. So kind of watch these regions of the photo as I turn on the layer that has the Stability AI changes. Right? Okay. So yeah, there's some difference in how the AI decided to fill in this wall and how it decided to fill in the wooden slats. You know, honestly, to me, either one of those is acceptable, right? Going back to local gen AI versus stability AI, it, the, you know, the, the, the reconstruction of corners and things. Where I find stability AI did, did better is in this space down here. There's less artifacting. It's still a little bit soft. There's still a little bit of that. I've generated things with AI, so lower resolution. And I think it did a better job in maintaining some more of the, the blues and the colors here where local decided to, to patch this in with more, you know, faded paint or, you know, missing paint as compared to the, uh, the local Gen AI. Interesting, or sorry, stability. Local, interesting enough, like the local one, it kind of made this warped piece of wood, which I kind of like. It gave it some character. And this is just the, uh, the, the deltas you'll get. You, you try the AI models, you see, you get a little bit of different things. But that's, that's kind of the differences there. So Stability AI, I, I'm still giving like, you know, the tip of my hat to stability for, for stronger results. But, you know, one more time to see those differences. And I'll go all the way up the stack here. This was the original local gen AI to replace it versus stability AI. You know, I'm, I'm giving the nod to stability there. And I've done this on several photos. And you know, I've, I've landed in the same space. Stability AI is producing stronger results. So if Stability AI is the best, why wouldn't I use it all the time? Uh, one reason is cost. Stability AI, it's a cloud service. It's not uh, a service that's included with On One Photo Raw. Photo Raw has integrated support for Stability AI into Photo Raw so you can leverage the cloud service. But it's kind of like, you know, where you have smug mug integration into Photo Raw, that doesn't mean smug mug is free, right? I mean, well, they might have had a partnership at some point, but you know, it's things like that where you know you're you're interconnecting applications. It doesn't mean that all of the things you're interconnecting 
are included in your purchase price of Photo Raw. So, you know, well, what does Stability AI cost? And it, it's it's based on credits right now, at least as of this video. You know, Stability AI is credit based, and so you get uh, 25 credits when you open up an account. And as you go into your account, you can see I've actually gone negative uh, in the course of of creating uh, <laughs> this video and you know going through the uh, the steps a few times. But if you want to get more credits, you need to pay. And you're getting, you know, a thousand credits for ten bucks. So, you know, basically, it's, you know, it's like a, a penny a credit. How much does uh, each of those retouches cost in terms of credits? Three to four is what I've been seeing here. And so that kind of nets out to, you know, on average for ten U.S. dollars, I'm gonna get maybe, let's say, three hundred retouches. Maybe that's great. Maybe that's enough for what you do. Maybe it's it's woefully inadequate because you're doing retouches all the time. Don't know. I want you to have the information so you can make an informed choice. One more thing about informed choices is terms of service. Right? You are using a cloud service if you're using Stability AI. That means your photo will be uploaded to the cloud. The AI work happens there, and the results come back to Photo Raw, and it builds it into that layer. And you know, the integration is very nice. But you are needing an internet connection to get your photo up to stability and back. And well, what is stability going to do with your photo? That's where the terms of service come in. So you need to read through those terms of service so that you understand you know, what things are you giving Stability AI permission to do. Go to the FAQ, scroll down and check out the stability terms of service, and yeah, read these. This is important, especially for photographers, where what happens with your images, you need to understand what that's doing. Now, whether you're sharing to Instagram, you're sharing to Meta, Facebook, or you're, you're going into a contest, reading all the terms of service are important. And in particular, check out you know, ownership of content and what stability might be able to do with that content. Understand that, make sure that you're comfortable with it, and if it's suitable for your photography, Great, you know, try out Stability AI. That's kind of really uh, like the net net of, uh, of what I wanted to make sure I covered with you for these two different models. You know, if you have a, a reasonably strong GPU, I'd say start with, you know, your local Gen AI, try it out, see the results. And um, in many cases, it's, it's quite acceptable. In more extreme cases, like when you're doing retouching like I was doing there with wood slats and other things like that, uh, you might need that extra power for Stability AI. But it does come with these, uh, these additional considerations, cost, and you're having to have that internet connection and using a cloud service. I hope you found the video useful and helpful. If you got questions about it, um, I'll do my best to answer. I mean, I'm not an expert on terms of service and I'm not an expert on stability AI, but uh, as far as, you know, what other uh, observations I've seen with the tools or you got other questions, you know, go ahead and ask and I'll do my very best to answer. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.